Good morning. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and let the st other students be seated. If we will just allow them a few minutes to get seated. Thank you. You may come toward the front here. There are seats. If you are a freshman, you are seated on the, my right to the front here. So. We have a few more seats. If there are no more seats, let's just seat them in the first few of the stands area. Thank you. To Madam President Pruitt, to the students, to the faculty, staff, especially to our royal court and student leaders, and to the President's cabinet and all of you who are in attendance today, welcome to the fall convocation, transformation pivoting from excellence to preeminence the journey continues. E.W. Rand Center, the Varsity Gymnasium, October 24th, 2023, 11 o'clock a.m. I am Dr. Cynthia Hester, your interim provost and vice president of academic affairs, and I will be presiding over the program. I would ask at this time that our opening prayer if Reverend John Francis would come of the Higher Hope Fellowship Church and an employee of Jarvis Christian University in the maintenance area, and after him, our scripture by Dr. Cleopatra Allen, assistant to the provost, director of academic initiatives and university transformation officer, and the program will continue as printed. Thank you. God bless you. Let us bow. Oh, gracious Father, we come once again before your throne of grace, and we come with thanksgiving. We come with praise. We magnify your name because you're so worthy of all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Lord, we just invite you in today to just come on in and just have your way. Look upon your people who are civil here today, Lord. Father, we come and we realize that we have many needs and we yet believe that you are a need meter, you are a way maker, you are a door opener. And Father, we just ask, O oh God, that you would just have your way right now. Father, in the midst of us, pour out your spirit upon us, even the more. Help us, O oh God, to become more like you and less like the world. Lord, do it right now. In the name of Jesus, touch every person that's assembled here in this place. God, by your spirit right now, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just want to thank you for it. And as I meditate upon where you brought me from, Lord, you brought me from a mighty long ways. And I just want to thank you for it right now, Lord, because if it had not been for you on my side, where would I be? I would yet be lost in my sin, but I'm so grateful today that you look beyond my fault and you saw my need. Truly, we serve a God that is an awesome God and an indeed worthy of all the praise, worthy of the honor, worthy of the glory. I found out years ago that can't nobody do you like the Lord can. 
Can't nobody bless you like Jesus can. Can't nobody open doors for you like Jesus can. All we have to do is just trust in him and look to him for all our needs. And we just give God the glory and give God the praise today for all that he's done and that he's going to continue to do in the lives of his people. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Amen and amen. I will be reading Psalm 8, and it says, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. You have displayed your splendor above the heavens. Out of the mouths of infants and nursing babes, you have established strength. Because of your adversaries, that you might silence the enemy and make the vengeful cease. When I see and consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? And then verse nine says again, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic and glorious and excellent is your name in all the earth. And the people of God said amen. Good afternoon. I am Darren Rankin. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, the Executive Cabinet, I'd like to officially and formally bring you greetings on this most auspicious and special occasion. Uh, welcome, and the program will proceed as printed. Thank you. I have the privilege of introducing to you individual students that you will be seeing probably on a daily or weekly basis. And these persons are part of the president's cabinet. And as I call your name, would you please stand? Dr. Cleopatra Allen. As I mentioned, Dr. Allen is the assistant to the provost and director of academic in initiatives and our university transformation officer. She has been here at Jarvis Christian for six years. And would you remain standing, please? Dr. Rankin. Dr. Darren Q. Rankin is the Vice President of Enrollment Management and Retention, and he has been with us for one year. Ms. Cynthia Jackson. Ms. Cynthia Jackson, Mrs. Cynthia Jackson is the Chief of Staff and Director of Administrative Management Programs and Title III Programs. She has been with us for 11 years. Dr. Andre S. Richardson. Dr. Richardson is the Vice President of Student Services and has been with us for two years, even though it seems like forever. Anyway, Dr. Kanoye A.K. Dr. A.K. is our Vice President for Institutional Advancement and has been with us for four years. Ms. Paula Love. Ms. Paula Love is our Vice President for Finance and Business Administration and she has been with us for four years. Would you please give a round of applause to the President of the President's Cabinet. Next, we will have a musical selection by the university's choir, and then we will proceed with the freshman class of 2027 presentation by Mr. Charles Smith.
came fiery smoke down in the valley on my knees. Ask my Lord, have mercy, please. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. body, not the soul. All around me, all was fine. Ask my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Only one train on this track to heaven and right back. St. Peter waiting at the gate. Come on, sinner, don't be late. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. I will Good morning. This is the part of the program where we will take the time to officially welcome our freshman class of 2027 to Jarvis Christian University by receiving your medallion. Jarvis Christian University Executive Cabinet, you may stand and take your position, please. Now, with the freshman class of 2027, please stand and face your left. All freshman class of 2027, please stand and face your left. Start to your left. <laughs> So starting from the back, please make your way forward and face one of the executive cabinet members that you'll see. Walk all the way down to the end, please. Please remain quiet, please. Mm -hmm. 
please remain quiet. Freshman class of 2027, let this medallion please serve as an inspiration and motivation to you that in the next four years, you will be receiving your bachelor's degree from Jarvis Christian University and it's with expectation that you wear the same medallion across the stage. Again, thank you and please let's give them a round of applause. Good morning. Born this day, October 24th, in Grenada, Mississippi, to the late Mr. and, Ms. Mr. and Mrs. William Lee, Dr. Linnell M. Lee Pruitt, a petite young lady who grew up in the small town of Leland, Mississippi, is today a profound academician with over 25 years in higher education. She is the 13th president of Jarvis Christian University and the institution's second female, black female president, having assumed this post on July 1st, 2023. She is also an educator and social work worker by trade who has an endearing love for students here at Jarvis Christian University. As many of you are aware, she began her tenure as provost and vice president for academic affairs at Jarvis in August of 2012. As part of the executive team, she, is, she was instrumental in increasing student enrollment and enhancing academic programs to include mass communications, concentrations in cybersecurity, sports management, healthcare management, online degree completion programs, and the online graduate programs in business, and administ business administration and criminal justice. 
Prior to her arrival at Jarvis, she served in various capacities at Mississippi Valley State University from 1998 to 2012 in such positions as a social work faculty member, director of community service, service learning, dean of university college, and director of adult learning program. In preparation for executive leadership opportunities, she participated in such programs as the Council of, of Independent Colleges, Presidential Vocation and Institutional Mission Programs, the Millennium Leadership Initiative for Prospective College and University Presidents, and the internal leadership training provided by Jarvis and Mississippi Valley. In addition to her roles in higher education, she served as pastor of the AME Episcopal Church. She is an ordained elder, having served in various capacities, including service as a member of the general board of the AME Church from 2008 to 2016, uh, the General Conference Commission from 2016 to 2021, and the director of the Christian education for the 8th Episcopal District that includes the state of Mississippi and the state of Louisiana. Last month, she transitioned from pastor to president. Dr. Pruitt holds a PhD in social work from Jackson State, a Master of Divinity from Payne Theological Seminary, a Master of Social Work from Temple University, and a Bachelor of Social Work from Jackson State. She has one daughter, Gwendolyn C. Lee, and two granddaughters, Jalen Mariah Lee and Pariah Marie Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our beloved president, the Reverend Dr. Glennell M. Lee Pruitt, to the podium. Thank you, please be seated. And thank you, Mrs. Stansel Jackson, for that introduction. To Dr. Cynthia Hester, who is presiding today, my colleagues who make up the President's Executive Cabinet, convocation participants, members of the Board of Trustees that includes Mrs. Talva King and Ms. Renaya White, alumni, community partners, students, faculty, and staff. In 1979, 44 years ago, I entered Jackson State University as a freshman student. When I left Leland, Mississippi on that day, my mother nor my father went with me to JSU. My father had passed away when I was in the eighth grade, and my mother, a cafeteria worker, did not take off from work to go with me. This was not an act of being unconcerned or not caring, but she had only an eighth grade education and did not know how to help me navigate this college world environment. My mother would not come to JSU until May of 1983, four years later, when I would receive my first degree, and she would be present at graduation ceremonies for two of the three additional degrees I would receive before dying from breast cancer in October of 2006. Although my mother did not go to college, she had prepared me, and she had prepared me for not only college, but for life. She had taught me the basics of life, to be respectful, to remember that no one was better than me, but may be different from me, to say thank you, and excuse me, and good morning, and yes and no, sir, and yes and no, ma'am. She taught me that I did not have to do all the talking and that listening is valuable. She taught me to treat others better than the way I wanted to be treated. She taught me that where I came from did not determine where I was going or what I would be. This may sound so antiquated and out of touch in today's world, 
but it has served me very well all of my life. And I believe they are still the basis needed for a society that has gone so far left that getting back right seems impossible. 44 years seems like such a long time ago when I was sitting with my other classmates, not very sure of myself at the age of 17, wondering what would be next. Like some of you when you first arrived, and maybe you may still be, I was apprehensive and even a little bit afraid. I came from a close-knit family where we did everything together, and here I was in a place without my mama and my daddy, entering into a world of independence that I had never had before. There was no one there to get me up for class, there was no one there to tell me to be watchful and careful of certain people who didn't look or act right. There was no one there to tell me where I needed to be and when I needed to be there. But I had the basics that my mama had given me. Respect, manners, self-respect, and the belief that I was enough. I never felt like I had to pretend to be someone I was not doing something I did not want to do or being with someone I did not want to be with. I was enough. Abundant, adequate, ample, full, sufficient, suitable, all right already, complete, comfortable, and competent. That is what I am, and that is what each of you are listening to me. That's what you are this morning. I know some of you may feel you have to be like someone else, do what someone else does, act like someone else acts, go where someone else is going, but I want to say to you this morning, my young brothers and sisters of every hue, and those who are not so young anymore, that you are enough. Some mornings I text these words to my granddaughter who is a freshman at Jackson State University. I text her, be you, because you are enough. When I say that, I do not mean that you stop here and go no further. I mean that at the core of who you are, you are enough. Why? Because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are enough because when God formed you in your mother's womb, God put enough in you to be enough. You may not have been born in the best family, but you are enough. You may not have been born under the best circumstances, but you are enough. You may not have been given the opportunities that you see others have, but you are enough to make your own opportunities. You may have had to fend for yourself, but you were enough to do that, and you will do even more because you are enough. I just wish you would believe that you are enough. Students, we're here to help you. We're here to prepare you for the next step in life. We will not let you slide. You cannot act any way you want without consequences. You cannot slack in attending class and think it's okay. We will correct you when you are wrong and cheer and advocate for you when you are right. We will, that's why we're here. We're here to celebrate with you, cry with you, counsel you. We will be accessible, approachable, and available to you, but you have to be open and accepting of what we want to offer and to give you because we see the power in you. Young men, you are enough. As you search to find more about who you are and who you're becoming, let me remind you that you are not what you wear and you are not your hair. You are not even what I hear you say and how I see you behave. You are not even how I hear you speak to each other, to young women and to adults. Young women, you are enough. As you search to find more about who you are and who you are becoming, you are more than your hair and you are more than what you wear. You are not the words I hear coming out of your mouth, and you are not the person who looks at another woman and hate her because you hate yourself. 
faculty and staff, you are enough. You are more than the degrees that you have earned, and you are as much as your life experiences. You have learned enough, been through enough, survived enough, failed enough, cried enough, laughed enough, worried enough, thought enough, to care enough about these young people who have chosen Jarvis Christian University as their launch pad for greater. You have enough stories and experiences that you can share the good, the bad, and even the ugly when appropriate, so that our students can understand that we were not born where we are, but we have excelled to where we are by the grace of God. On this campus, everyone matters, degree or no degree, lottie, dotted, and everybody is enough. And everybody is somebody. Our students need more than what we know. They need to know who we are, and they need to know that we care about who they are becoming. Community partners, we need your help. If you are here today and you look into the eyes of these young people, don't just see the present and who they are, but see the future and who they are becoming. Here at Jarvis Christian University, we accept our students the way they are but they cannot leave the way that they come. We want something about them to have changed that will help them be their better selves. These are the citizens of this community, this country, and global society who are preparing to become the answers to the mess that we have made. They are preparing to become the peacemakers who are not constrained or restrained by a social order that has pitted us against each other because of the color of our skin or the texture of our hair or the choices we made about our gender or the choices we have made about the God we serve. We hear talking heads on television talking about the debt we are leaving future generations. I'm concerned about the hate and the lies, and the deceit, and the oppression, and the inequity, and the injustice that we are leaving this generation. Partner with us, community, to help our students become responsible citizens, not just for Texas or wherever they live, but for the world. I never imagined that I would be here as president of Jarvis Christian University. This was not the plan for my life. I was on another course headed in another direction. However, after some experience and much prayer, I decided that I would reconcile my desires for myself with God's plan for my life. I decided that to be happy and live out the plans that were set for me before my existence on this planet 62 years ago today, I had to be willing to give up what I wanted for what God had planned. Every day, I wake up excited about coming to work. I wake up excited about seeing you in the hallways. I wake up excited about being in the cafeteria with you students because you give me life and purpose, and you define for me that I'm enough. You will never know what it does for me when you hold the door open, when you nod and give me a smile of hello, when you see me and embrace me, when you shout across the yard or across the room, hey, Dr. Pruitt, I know that you see me and I know that you know that I see you because I see enough in you. Now, you may not see that you are enough right now, but eventually you will. Honestly, it took me a while to understand my worth and that I was enough, but I had been grounded in the enough concept by my mama and daddy. I would never forget when I called my mom and told her I wanted to pledge and how much it costs. Her first question was, why are you down there trying to buy friends? She always felt that I was enough. 
and that I should spend time with people who also thought I was enough and not those I had to pay to be my friend. Needless to say, she sent me the money. And last week, I celebrated 43 years of being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Students, you are more than the text messages about your behavior that I receive all through the night. You are more than the sports you play. You are more than the organizations you are involved in. You are more than the accolades that you receive. All of that is wonderful, but all of that is because you have the enough in you to excel to the highest of heights in your dreams. You're more than the rumbles. You are more than those things you use to self-medicate, to dull the pain of your experiences. You are more than the conflicts that you have. You are more than the challenges you have experienced. You are more than what may try to regulate, rele relegate you to be. You are more than any of that. You are enough. You are a canopy of possibility that some of you can't even imagine. You are a picture that is still being painted. You are a vase of a beautiful bouquet that is being designed. You are the very image of God, and as you grow in your God self, you will discover who you truly are, but that begins with taking an honest look at who you are and who you want to become. Songwriters Mitch Lee and Joe Darian wrote words to a song, The Quest, better known to most of us as The Impossible Dream, written long before any of you were born, or probably even your parents. But these are the words. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary, to reach the unreachable star, this is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. To fight for the right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. Those are beautiful words by songwriters who know how to put such lyrics together that last a lifetime and that speaks to the strength, the enough, that we all have. I don't have those kind of words, but these are the words I will leave with each of you today. Words that are encouraging to me even at my age. Words that resonate in my spirit and give me strength to continue when sometimes I want to quit. These words are words that are written in my heart and head and I think will help you. I did not write them, but I believe them. I believe that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I, I, I believe that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I believe that I can do all things through God and through Christ who strengthened me. I believe that we are more than conquerors through him uh, who loved us. These are the words that I believe and I invite each of you to believe these words too. Last night as I was finishing what I would say to you, I received this message from a dear friend. I am proud of you and excited to hear your first official address to the university tomorrow. The state of the university is faith-filled and forward-moving. I am certain that the message of God will speak expressly to ignite faith, hope, love, community, and vision. I'm not sure if this address has done any of that, 
But I do hope that it will inspire all of us to be our best selves. You see, Jarvis Christian University is only as good as those of us who are part of her. This is our time to write our portion of Jarvis's history. This is our time to impact, the, to impact the way we will be seen and understood. This is our time to be none but great, and there is no time like the present. UNCF has a slogan that says that when we invest in and support students who receive UNCF scholarships, that they are, or you are students, our dividend. Well, students, the faculty and staff, we are your possibility. Be safe, be well, and remember, I need each of you to survive. God bless you, and God keep you. This is my prayer for you, and thank you. I know the proper protocol, but as Dr. Pruitt mentioned, she said that today is her birthday, amen? And so our next election, of course, will be coming up, but I would like, if you don't mind at this time, for us to sing happy birthday to our 13th president for that beautiful message. So if you all, the choir, would help us in singing happy birthday to our illustrious president, and all of us join in. I think we're going to enjoy this moment, President Pruitt. They want to know if I'm going to start it off. Now, y'all know I can't sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. want to know if I'm going to do the other version. No, I'm not going to do the other. Happy birthday. No. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right. Amen. Now we'll have the true musical selection by our choir in our announcements, alma mater, and benediction. Let's give Dr. Pruitt one more hand for that beautiful message.
just continue to thank the choir for that wonderful selection. It was hard for me to stay in my seat. I almost jumped up a couple times, so don't fire me, Doc. But uh, that was a wonderful selection. Thank you, and also for your assistance, uh, Mr. Michael Bradley. And this time I'll bring you the announcements for the week. Uh, this week is Jarvis Fest. We celebrate with our Jarvis Fest activities. Our first event is actually this event, uh, convocation with the wonderful message we've heard and received from uh, Dr. Pruitt. On Thursday, October 26th at 7 p.m., there will be a coronation of Mr. and Ms. Jarvis Christian University right here in the E.W. Rand Center. And we'll be celebrating our senior business major, Mr. Javier Law, as Mr. Jarvis, and our senior biology major, Ms. Maureen Cabujo, as Ms. Jarvis Christian University. Why don't the two of you stand real quick? Mr. and Mrs. Jarvis, y'all. Right, y'all can have a seat, thank you very much. There will be a reception immediately following our coronation as well. On Friday, October 27th at 9 p.m., there will be a, stu a student pre-Halloween costume after party, also in E.W. Rand Center, but upstairs in the auxiliary gym. On Saturday, October 28th, the Jarvis Christian University Athletic Hall of Fame enshrinement luncheon begins at 11.30 a.m in the university's E.W. Rand Center, right here. Uh, guest speaker is the 2004 Jarvis alumna, the number one women ba women's basketball rebound in the nation, <clears throat> Latasha Roach Keith. She is the current Dallas Athletic Conference Coach of the Year and the head women's basketball coach at Dallas College in Cedar Valley. Tickets are $75 per person or $600 per table of eight. Also on Saturday, October 28th, the Jarvis Day Party will take place at 2.30 p.m. in the common area of the Seventh Jenkins Living Learning Center. Next is a congratulations. We want to congratulate. Please put your hands together. We want to congratulate the men's soccer team for an undefeated home record this season. An undefeated home record this season. They also clinched the conference playoff for the first time in history with two games left in the season. So we want to go ahead and celebrate our men's soccer team and also celebrate Coach Martinez and his staff for a fine job. Thank you very much. Our baseball team is hosting uh, the annual or second annual Halloween game this Saturday. After the Athletic Hall of Fame enshrinement, uh, we'll have a definite time uh, after that but uh, Coach uh, Holbrook and his staff, if you didn't come out there last year, please check it out this year. Those guys are out there with masks on and, and everything. So you got the, you know, vampires and werewolves and all that stuff playing baseball against each other. You should come and check it out. The Writing Lab. The Writing Lab is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, there are also some employment opportunities as a peer instructor. Please stop by Student Success Services Building uh, office 159, uh, you can see uh, the staff over there. Sunday morning worship will take place at 11 a.m. October 29, 2023. And according to Reverend Dr. Dinkins, it's gonna be in the chapel, is that correct, sir? Everything will be working, uh, this is what he said now, <clears throat> in the chapel <laughs> as of today, or later today. But on Sunday, we will have Sunday worship in the chapel and uh, we'll have uh, more information about chapel, I mean about, yeah, chapel next Tuesday. These have been all of the announcements for today. Thank you for your attention, we appreciate it, and we'll move on to the next thing, which is the alma mater in our program. So, Reverend Dr. Dinkin. Let us all stand as we sing together our alma mater. J.C.
Just before I announce the uh, benediction, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please remember to stay in your spaces until we have completed the recession. Well, please stay in your spaces until we have marched out. Ladies and gentlemen, receive now this benediction. Go forth, my brothers and my sisters, remembering that you are a canopy of possibilities. Go forth, my brothers and my sisters, remembering that when God formed you in your mother's womb, God put enough in you to be enough. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you God's peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joy, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen.